How do you make yourself relevant in your community? How do you give back in a country whose language is not your own, in a place where you don't have a professional network, a personal network, a place where you don't have wasta, influence, network in Arabic. You let your actions speak louder than the words. My name is Jose Saucedo. I'm an American citizen living in Qatar for the last three years. And I'm pleased to be here with you guys today on this wonderful event. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm an operations manager turned environmentalist. I'm an industrial engineer, a problem solver, a project manager. I did not study or prepare myself to be doing what I'm doing here today. I never dreamt that I'll be doing what I'm doing in Qatar today. Yet, I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to do what I do. I always knew I wanted to do something good and give back to my community. And that's a decision that I made shortly after I arrived in Qatar and I saw the opportunities that I had. I said, I'm going to work on plastic pollution. I'm going to make myself of use and service for my community. In the past three years, I have mobilized over 8,000 volunteers after having the opportunity to lead a wonderful organization called the Doha Environmental Actions Project, DEEP. We are a group of volunteers that are leading the fight against plastic pollution. 8,000 volunteers, more than 130 cleanups organized, and we have removed over 80 tons of trash from the beaches, the sand dunes, and the heritage sites of Qatar. I have been very fortunate to interact with people from all sorts of backgrounds, from all over the place here in Qatar. I've done many school presentations, and I've interacted with volunteers from all over the world, from business leaders, to ambassadors, to excellencies, to the average Jose here. I've had a wonderful opportunity to try to do what I can to make a difference in my community. Let's talk about the problem. Let's talk about plastic pollution. Plastic pollution is a global issue. It's not any different for Qatar. The whole world is trying to figure it out, and we wanted to be part of the solution and not part of the pollution. Just to give you some numbers, every year around the world, 300 million tons of plastic are produced. And plastic is not bad. The problem is how we dispose of it. And oh, by the way, by 2050, the plastic production in the world is going to triple by 2050. The real problem is that less than 9% of all the plastic that is produced is recycled. The rest goes to landfill or we litter it all over the world. It is estimated that around the world every year 8,000 tons, 8 million tons, I'm sorry. It is estimated that every year, 8 million tons of plastic enter the oceans. That's the equivalent of having one dump truck going to the ocean and dumping its cargo every minute. Imagine that every minute this dump truck is just pouring its cargo into the ocean. I've been talking here for four or five minutes now. That's five dump trucks just emptying all that plastic trash in the ocean. I'm sure that you all have seen on social media the photos, the videos of the animals that have been affected by plastic pollution. The whale that had its stomach full of plastic, the turtle, the bird, the dolphin, you name it, that got caught and entangled and that perished somewhere around the world and even here in Qatar. A whale shark, a dugong, a cormorant, you name the animal. They all are at risk due to plastic pollution and ghost gear and ghost nests. And let's not forget microplastics. 
they pose a great risk to human health that we just yet don't understand. Scientists are trying to, to still understand how is that impact going to impact our life. But we know this for certain. We know that microplastics are entering the food chain. We know that, that uh, crab and shrimp and, and plankton are eating these microplastics and then they enter the food chain and a bigger fish eats them and a bigger fish eats that bigger fish and so forth until that fish is in your plate, in my plate. And the problem is we are filling up the ocean with trash and with plastic. Okay, I know this may sound all gloom and doom and very depressing, but it isn't. Some say, why bother? The problem of plastic pollution is so big, there's nothing we can do about it. And yes, the challenge ahead of us is huge. But this is exactly what triggered me to take action and to focus on the things that I have control over. The time to take action is here and now, and we must focus on the things we have control over. So what am I doing? <clears throat> and most importantly, what are you doing? I'm trying to help people realize the incredible amount of power that they have. There are three key things that have helped me overcome adversity and to be successful with my efforts. <clears throat> First, check with yourself. Recognize that this is not about what so-and-so is doing or not doing. This is entirely about you. What are you doing to help fix the problem of plastic pollution? Are you part of the pollution or are you part of the solution? What are you doing yourself? I oftentimes hear people saying, especially when we notice something is wrong or broken or not working, oh, someone should do something about that or someone should fix that or someone should call that person. You are someone, I am someone, let's be that someone who takes care of the issue and tries to fix it. Second, keep it real. Be respectful, be objective, be constructive, but keep it real. Global problems oftentimes give us this sense, this impression that such things are happening in other places. Oh, not here, not in Qatar. Oh, we don't have plastic pollution. Oh, that's someone else's trash. Oh, that animal or those hundreds of turtles that died because they got caught in a net. Oh, that happened somewhere else, not here in Qatar. People were shocked to see the amount of plastic that we can find in our beaches, in the sand dunes, and on the heritage sites of Qatar. They were also surprised to see the impact that we can have in those weekly cleanups we perform. After an hour of cleaning up, you can see two, 300 meters of beach that have been cleaned, not one piece of plastic on it. Imagine if we all did that. Most importantly though, imagine if we didn't litter to begin with. Yet, we have shown people that united as a group, as active members of society, we can make a great impact on the appearance of our beach, of our environment, and of our country. Seeing that inspires people to do something about it. And when you mobilize thousands of volunteers to a beach cleanup, to pick someone else's trash, you realize that you're going after something good. You're doing something right. So, keep it real. Third, Make sure others notice your efforts. Regardless of how noble they are, chances are you will be inspiring others to take action. I know that's the case for me, but I alone will not be able to fix the problem of plastic pollution. I need all of you to give us a hand, and we know and we need 
those who are in positions of power, leaders, uh, government officials, business people, individuals. We need all of you guys to do your part so we can do what we need to do to keep Qatar clean for generations to come. So you have to work harder than anyone. How do you get noticed? Work harder than anyone. I will tell you to an extent, go crazy. Do what nobody has ever done. And in my case, that was, I'm gonna do as many cleanups as I can. I'm gonna do as many school presentations as I can. I'm gonna bring as many students, volunteers, business people, companies, whoever that wants to join me on this fight, I'm gonna bring them to the beaches. I did dozens of school presentations in a pre-COVID world. On, on this time of year, every week of the year, I'll probably be spending three to five days either in a school doing a presentation like today or taking the students from that school on a, clip, on a cleanup somewhere on the beaches and the sand dunes of Qatar. There were some times where I, where I would have three four, sometimes five cleanups on a given week. Yeah, you hear that right? That's almost a cleanup every day. I didn't do that all the time, but it did happen often. So you can say I went crazy until finally people started noticing, acknowledging there's a problem, and more importantly, jumping on the bandwagon so they can help us fix the problem of plastic pollution. People realize that we are part of the solution. So in summary, three things. Check with yourself. What are you doing? Are you doing anything or not? Are you part of the pollution or part of the solution? Number two, keep it real. Make sure people can relate to your message within the local context. And number three, go crazy. You have to find a way to catch people's attention. Earlier you heard me say that there are three things that help me overcome adversity and be successful. And that could be a misleading statement. By successful I mean being able to, <clears throat> to sit on the table having people waiting to hear your message, being interested to hear what you're saying, and paying attention to the problem at hand. Yes, in that regard, you can say, I have been successful, that we have been successful, because all of my work is possible thanks to all of the wonderful volunteers that support our efforts. But make no mistakes. True success will come the day we no longer are littering Qatar and the world the way we're doing it right now. When we significantly reduce our dependence on single-use plastics, then and only then can we say that we have been successful with our efforts. And when all of us take small actions that will have a huge impact against plastic pollution, then and only then we can say, mission accomplished, we did well. Remember, at the end of the day, this is not about what so-and-so is doing, this is about what you're doing. What are you going to do? Some people need to start on step one, putting trash in the bin. Others will start recycling in school, at work, in their compound, in their apartment building. Others may start using recycling, uh, others may start using reusable bottles, water bottles, coffee mugs. Some will use reusable bags for their grocery shopping. Others might decide to buy less stuff. Others may choose to use public transportation more often. Some might create an eco committee at work. 
Some people will create laws that will protect the environment. Others will enforce them. Some will create NGOs, nonprofit organizations. Whatever you do, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be elaborate. But you have to do something about it. Make no mistake what scientists are predicting. By 2050, if we do not take action, there will be more fish in the water. There will be more plastic in the water than fish in the ocean. That's by 2050. By the time you guys are my age, you may be facing that problem unless we take action. So what are you going to do? If you're a businessman, if you're having a meeting, even in school, don't use single-use water bottles. Bring an alternative. Give people an option. Instead of giving single-use water bottles to everyone, can we have a water station? Can I just refill my bottle there? Those are very simple things we all can do, and believe me, they have an impact. Oh, it's just one bottle, water bottle, said eight billion people in the planet, right? So anyways, we have to start designing and living our life in a way that it reduces, not increases our dependency on single-use plastics. These are just some ideas, guys. Pick one, pick one thing. It can be simple, it can be complicated, but just go crazy and do it. Help us make a difference. I've reached the end of my presentation today. So if you will only remember one thing and one thing only, please make sure that is this. Whatever you decide to do, we must start today. The time for action is here and now, today, for you and I to keep Qatar and the world clean. Let's do what we can and let's keep Qatar clean. Thank you, everyone.